Hey beautiful people, it's Mizgo here and today I'm going to share with you guys six Figma plugins that's going to save you so much time because time is money. Money is time. When I save you time, you make more money. When you make more money, you will gently smash that like button to really show your appreciation for this video. Alright guys, let's get into it. So, the very first plugin is a very simple one, but it's going to save you so much time. My biggest itch with Figma is that when I'm trying to look for a new font to use in a design, so for example here, I can't preview any of the fonts on my machine and it somehow sometimes I don't remember which fonts I want to use or I don't remember what the names were for a specific font. So if you head over to uh, plugins and you select better font picker, download this to your Figma, you will have a preview of all the different fonts that you can use for your designs. This will save you so much time because I actually waste a lot of time on trying to figure out which font to use and you can simply pick your favorite font, mine is uh, Papyrus, and yeah, there we have it. Saved you probably a couple of hours within this week, and if you like that and you appreciate that, make sure to gently smash that like button. All right guys, the second plugin that I have for you guys is another simple one, really good for prototyping in Figma. So a lot of apps and websites that I design all require charts, whether it's a dashboard, it's a FinTech product, whatever it might be, I always end up having to create charts, and I don't want to waste time in creating custom charts for a prototype or a wireframe. So in plugins, head over to charts, download this one, and this allows you to create line charts, scatter charts, area charts, bar charts, pie charts, charts this, charts that, line chart this. And what this allows you to do also is to refine all the elements that you want to actually create. My team is messaging me on Slack right now and I'm, I'm filming this YouTube video and you, I hope that you appreciate this so much that you will gently smash that like button. All right guys, so here you can say you want, I don't know, five different series. You can say, I don't want so much cluster. It's getting a bit sort of uh, clustered here. You can have three data points, refine it however you want. You can also hide the dots. You can hide the grid, do whatever you want. You can add the chart. And most importantly, you can also refine it from here as well. So you can actually go in and you have all the elements to play around with. So it's a really good, powerful tool. This is probably the worst chart I've ever created um, from this plugin. I don't know why, I don't know how this got generated, but it's really useful when you're just trying to create uh, prototypes to illustrate that a chart will go here. Now, the third one is for contrast. So accessibility, massive thing in UI design right now. but I used to use A11Y, color contrast uh, checker, and this does a stellar job in terms of like actually providing me uh, accessibilities and it tells me if everything's um, all, all great and whatnot, but I don't like the interface and I don't like using products that don't look good. So I found another one called contrast. So all you have to do is you can select the artboard, you can have it to scan, you can turn on show passing our layers, enable smart uh, sample lay of four layers, hit start scan, and it will give you the AA and also the AAA, the triple A grade for as color accessibility. Now you can see that this element, get in touch, is not accessible. And it actually gives you a breakdown of how many points you are off in terms of meeting the double A grade or the triple A grade. So for here, I can see that I just need to darken potentially really quickly. Uh, for an example, I can darken this, darken this to increase the contrast. I can rescan and ta-da, voila, saved you another few hours uh, in the week for accessibility. So contrast is a really good tool. It looks good, feels good, makes me feel good. Does, that allows me to create really good work as well. So with all these good things, I feel a lot better about myself. And the fourth plugin that I have for you guys is Image Palette. Now, I do a broad range of design sort of services for clients and people and even for myself. And coming up with a color palette sometimes requires me to actually go through the manual process of figuring out what's the feeling, what are the vibes, creating a mood board. And oh, by the way, I actually have a video about how to uh, create a custom color palette from scratch. So make sure to check that above. And a lot of the times I actually need to grab photos, create that mood board, create that vibe, create that feel. And then I need to color swatch it to create my own color palettes. So for example, if I grab a photo and let's just pick one of my favorite movies, um, Step Brothers, oh, I just realized it's not in English. I don't know what's, what it's saying. I don't know what language that is. But if I wanted to create a color palette from this, I would manually have to go in, create a couple of squares 
and then manually go in and color drop this to create a palette that I desire, right? So this takes a lot of time and it's quite tedious and it's quite, I don't know, it's quite a monotonous uh, task to do. So what you can do is erase that, select your photo, download color palettes. Whoops, sorry, that's incorrect. Do not download uh, color palettes, it's image palettes. Here we go. And what this will do is, whoops, I have to select the image first, image palette. Here we go, and ta-da. It will just create a color palette from the image right away without you having to do anything, saving you another few hours every single week. So if you appreciate that, make sure to gently smash that like button. And you can also go in and you can also refine this to however you want as well. So this is an extremely powerful plugin because even when I went through my own personal redesign of my portfolio, I used this to create a color palette that I was happy with as well. So that is the fourth plugin. Now the fifth plugin is a lot of the times you might have noticed a lot of apps, even for myself, I use emojis in more modern day applications. And it's just a nice way to bring a little bit more personality, a little bit more character, and a little bit more fun to the app itself. But you might have realized that if you have to put in a emoji, it doesn't scale well because it's not a vector graphic or an SVG. So sometimes if you use it in a larger um, scenario or situation, it does blur up a little bit. So the best way to do, it, uh, the best way to around this is to actually use SVGs. Now, what's the magic between turning an emoji into an SVG? It is a Figma plugin. So head over to plugins and you have Figmoji. Now Figmoji has all the emojis in vector, uh, vector format. So it doesn't matter how big, how small, how wide, how high, how long it is, it's got it sorted for you. So simply, if you appreciate this video, you might wanna give it a few love hearts and there you go. You've got all the emojis right there for you and ta-da, all done. So you don't even need to worry about sort of scaling it up, scaling it down. You can actually export this out as an SVG uh, for your dev team. You can obviously create an entire library, create, inf implement all these into your own design system and you have all the emojis or scalable for you as well. So that is another time saver, another couple of hours off your week. So then the last, the very last actual Figma plugin for you is Mapsicle. So I'm sure, think about it, how many times have you headed, headed over to Google Maps to screenshot the map to let the developer know that a map will go here? And the really annoying thing is that sometimes you don't want the default color scheme of the map. Maybe you want a light version, you want a dark version, you want a lined version, you want some sort of custom version of the map. I will save you time here. So head over to plugins and you have Mapsicle. Simply download Mapsicle and this will oh, just, where is it? It's not even loading. Mapsicle, come on, come on, open up. There we go. All right, here we have it. Now, what you can do is you can move around this map however you want. You can set a whatever coordinate, a specific coordinate that you want. Um, you can set your zoom, so you can go five and it zooms all the way out. You can go 20 and zoom all the way in, like building level, or you can just go 10 and just like sort of stay comfortable with this. Then you can set the width. You can say it's 600 and you want a height of 400. You can also choose a style, which is pretty damn cool. I reckon you can do streets, you can do outdoors, you can do a light mode, you can do a dark mode, and then you can also do satellite mode. But if you are extremely ambitious, you might even want to do the satellite and the streets all together. Boom! All right, there we have it. So we might even go, just go outdoors guys, and we will select this, we can create the map, and there we have it, beautiful. And you can just let the developer know, let the team know, a map is gonna go here. One little trick that I do like is that because it gives you these customizations, I do like to sometimes go dark mode on a dark design. Let's just make it 1440, sorry, by 800. And let's just, let's just zoom out a little bit. Let's get a, let's get a nice, a better looking view. And let's go a little bit closer. Let's go 15. So you actually get some of the street level type stuff. Oh, what's over here? This one's a bit slow, guys. Apologies. Actually, let's go out a little bit. Might be a bit too. Here we have it. Cool. 
Right, so I want some like nice designs, some texture, and you can create the map. And there we have it. And then what I like to do is sometimes, just sometimes guys, is you can put it as a background and it looks terrific. There we have it. So you have like a bit of a, I don't know what website it might be, but if you want some sort of texture and it's about, the page is about some sort of location or the offices for this company called Smash, which is all about gently smashing that like button, then you can apply it into the background. And sometimes when you use that default colored view on Google Maps, it looks terrible. So hopefully guys, you enjoyed these six Figma plugins that will save you so much time to help you make more money because money is time, time is money. Guys, hopefully you found this extremely useful. Nori, my new puppy, is smashing and clawing at the door right now. And I do need to let him in because he probably wants to uh, help me with some design work. But I will hopefully see you guys in another video very, very soon.